Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the blog. I hope the start of your day is as good as it possibly can be. We have a lot going on today. I'm actually gonna be working on ball pythons. Gotta do some ultrasounding really quick, kind of wrapping up the breeding season. Of course, check for eggs. Hopefully we'll get some eggs later on. Might actually even ultrasound cupcake. Remember I said that I think there's a chance she might be gravid. Uh, regardless, a lot going on today and uh, I just wanna be here to tell you that we're gonna be okay. It's gonna be a great day. Let's push everything aside and let's just go ahead and jump into it and uh, enjoy this amazing day together. Again, uh, things are going good. My girl, look at how big she is. Cupcake is absolutely incredible. And uh, I tell you, oh, Al Machino, look at Al, Al's in shed. Looking really good. Worked on these guys a little bit yesterday. We finally have all that hot water going now where we have a temperature of about 82 degrees. So now we can do more water changes, get this bacterial plume going, get the filtration working to where we get some clear water. Like you guys have noticed, it really worked with Ivy because she was really cloudy up until just about four or five days ago. And now look at how clear her water is. Of course, she's over here looking really good. Hey Ivy. Regardless, uh, I, let's just go ahead and jump into things. Tell you what guys, I am loving that we are cranking on the production this year already. I, uh, I love this time of year and of course, let me just move this over a little bit. We have another clutch. This one is a children's python. You can see I'll get her all cleaned up afterwards. One little leg over here that we'll candle. We'll pull that aside and then we'll see what else she has. She's definitely wrapped around a nice little clutch of eggs. Doesn't look like a ton of eggs, but looks like a beautiful clutch. Good job, mom. You did so good. Tell you what, what a beautiful animal. And it's so cool to have like a dwarf python like this, that that's as big as they get. So I always say, if you're ever thinking about getting a python, but you want something smaller, children spotted stimson are great and these are actually a lot more eggs than I anticipated to be honest with you it's not a bad clutch that's two four six eight ten twelve eggs that is a good clutch for such a small female so twelve eggs children's pythons now the interesting thing is I'll candle this one egg but these guys incubate pretty quick most pythons like ball pythons and stuff like that hatch in about 60 days these hatch in about 50 days believe it or not so we'll incubate them at 88 to 89 degrees and again about 50 days from now we're gonna have a bunch of little baby children's pythons it's been a while since I've talked about about Pinocchio, the, of course the rhino rat snake from Vietnam. Uh, we have actually some adult breeders next door that we're breeding. Hopefully we can produce some more babies. They're absolutely incredible. And just like green tree pythons and emerald tree boas, they go through what they call an octogenic change. So as a baby, they're actually a gray color. And then of course, as they get older, they get this absolutely beautiful green color. And of course that nose, and the reason we call him Pinocchio is not because he's a liar, but because of course they'll use that as a lure to kind of lure in birds when they're up in the tree. It kind of looks like a grub worm right and then of course when that bird flies up to try to get the grub worm Pinocchio gets a free meal of a bird. I don't talk enough about Kribos. They are an amazing colubrid snake. I mean, this of course is Rico, the blacktail Kribo. Just an absolute beast. I mean, he is always on the move, but a really placid animal, super good. And we're trying to breed him well this year. Last year, the female actually was grabbed and then she got egg bound and none of the eggs were good. We got all the eggs out of her. But this year we've been breeding Rico again. Again, there's a few different types of Kribos. These are the blacktail Kribos and uh, I love them to death. Super intelligent snakes as you can see really inquisitive and just a fun snake so with any luck hopefully we'll get these guys bred this year and this is actually my girl Maya she's also a beautiful snake certainly not as big as Rico but she's the one that did produce for us last year again got egg bound was able to get those eggs out without any problems she definitely looks like she's got a little bit of follicle growth this year we've seen some copulation so uh, with any luck we'll get some black tail Kribos because uh, that would be a dream come true we also work with the yellow tail Kribos take a look at the color on that. It's almost like reverse, right? The black tail Kribos almost are this color and then turn black by the tail, whereas the yellow tails are almost reversed, but just absolutely stunning. And this is one of our girls. We didn't try to breed her yet this year because she's just not quite big enough, but I think next year we're definitely gonna be able to give a go at these guys. And then this is my big male yellow tail Kribo. Of course, these guys are huge monster big animals. These guys can literally sometimes get up to nine foot in length. So with any luck next year, he'll be waiting for that female that is just getting up to size because uh, they are incredible. Again, all the dry mark on which are indigo snakes, Kribo snakes. I mean, they're just so cool. I mean, they're just such a neat animal. And oh, and you can see this guy's just starting to shed. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him back because I don't want to rip his shed off, but you can see these guys are wonderful. You guys remember yesterday when we actually had the clutch of ball pythons, we had one little slug egg. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and see if Elvis is interested. And by the way, if you didn't see yesterday's video with the first ball python clutch, uh, you can check out the card right here. Go ahead and check that out. In the meantime, I'm just going to let Elvis come out, and I think he's going to be pretty excited about this egg. Here you go, buddy. And I'm going to just let him come out and see if he can smell it. 
and uh, see what happens from there. Again, mental enrichment I've been talking about a lot. Letting him come out, really checking things out, and just see if he wants to do it. I want to keep this guy's brain constantly working. We want to keep all our animals that way too. What's this? What's that? Oh, there he goes, there he goes. He's smelling it. He's like, what is that? What is that? It smells yummy. So he doesn't know what to do yet. So it's, oh, there he goes, there he goes. Yep, there it is. Is he gonna squeeze it or is he just gonna swallow it? Oh, it popped. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. He definitely loved it. Uh, I made a little bit of a mess though. Unfortunately, Bruce is over here working, so uh, he had the cord out and now there's a goop all over the cord, but I think Elvis loved that a little bit. Oh, he's such a cheeky monkey. Uh, again, just a cool way. I love uh, doing weird things with this guy and just keeping him happy. That's the face of a happy lizard right there. <laughs> what is he doing? A silly monkey? There he goes. Oh my god, that is awesome. Elvis, you're the best. He's all done. You're a messy eater, Elvis. It turns out that I did convince Lori and everyone else involved that we are going to do those personalized shout outs. Uh, they're going to be cheap. You can go to theretarium.com and again, you can have us, the crew, the animals, whatever, a personalized message, whether you need a pick me up, whether someone else needs a pick me up, whether it's your birthday, a special event, something like that, we're happy to do. They're probably only going to do it during this time where we're all shut in. We'll probably discontinue this uh, when this is all over. But for now, we just want to do something that's inexpensive that you guys can do uh, to just cheer you up for the day. So again, go to Reptarium com and check that out. Continuing to do a bunch of ultrasounding and kind of just getting a gauge of where we're at with the breeding season with everything. This girl was actually at 21 millimeters about a week and a half ago. You can see definitely grown. I would say it's definitely upper 20s, maybe even 30 millimeters right now. So this is actually a chocolate pinstripe. Yep, 28 millimeters. So she's growing really well. Again, a chocolate pinstripe, a really beautiful one at that. It actually bred to, of course, the banana chocolate spinner. Hopefully the Barney ball, we'll see what happens. But I'm just gonna scan a handful of animals today, uh, kind of continue to see. The vast majority of females are already ovulated, which is great, but we still have probably, you know, maybe 40 females that are in that 20 plus millimeter that we're still breeding, and a few even at 15. Hopefully they'll continue to grow so we can continue to kind of just get a gauge of what the breeding season's like down here. And as much as, you know, big follicles like 25 plus millimeters are important, there's a handful of girls like this one here that's actually was 13 millimeters. Now, if she grows past 13, that's a really good sign that we're gonna oh yeah and there you are look at that they went from 13 all the way up to that probably a good 17 18 something like that so just gonna get my cursor here go over to the other side yeah 17 millimeters so that's a big jump that's a great sign this is a female that when I was doing kind of the calculations of how many clutches I didn't think she'd go if at 13 it's pretty light but now that she's at 17 probably by next week she'll be in the mid 20s so it looks like we'll have one more female going hopefully we'll see that same pattern with the other animals that were at 13 14 millimeters I've got to work with a lot of lizards today and one of those of course is this beautiful beautiful Lewis eye hybrid right here oh my god look at her she is just like you know what you be honest with you one of my favorite things about this species here is truly truly those eyes what I'm actually going to be doing here is similar to like how we did with uh, the rhino iguanas you know how when we first started working with them it, it was it was sort of like just this food association so what I want is I want her to look at my hand and think I'm going to feed her every time so I'm going to try to put this here I'm going to try and see if I can get her to eat it and then I want to I want to actually touch your chest just like that so now that she's eating I touched a little bit I'll grab one, give another one. And while she's distracted, eating, I'm touching her. So like she's getting this sort of positive reinforcement about the food. The food's not only something she's getting this affirmation, but she's also getting the touch. Okay, you're right, baby. You have every right to be anxious, you know. That was actually pretty, pretty awesome. And it, and, and it really is awesome that you guys were able to actually see us do this because like, it, this is a way I can show you guys how we sort of address sort of problem, problem issues and also read the body language of our lizards. Uh, every lizard here has some different little thing about them, some way that they want to be sort of like, you know, manipulated one way or the other. Uh, and we always try to like push towards the positive of it all.
And just so you guys get an understanding is what we're looking at is, is we want to get females up to about 35 millimeters and then getting bred. You want to breed every maybe every three weeks with a male. This girl was at 20 millimeters before. It doesn't look like she grew a lot. Yeah, it looks like 20 millimeters. So she didn't grow at all. That's not what you want. You don't want stalling. So a lot of times when an animal stalls, you can get a copulation. So a male in and that'll kind of get that follicle growth up again. So she's going to get a male in with her probably tomorrow. Hopefully if he breeds and then in a week or so, we'll see that 20 go to maybe 25 or something like that. Again, we want to get up to about 33 to 35 millimeters. One last breeding, ovulated about 40, 45 millimeters. So most of these animals will go from 20 to 45 within two to three weeks or something like that. So uh, this girl didn't grow in the last week, but uh, hopefully with the breeding, she'll actually explode and uh, we'll see the same thing with the other animals. All right, last female that I'm gonna be doing down here, she was actually at 13 millimeters, so I'm not sure, again, if she's gonna grow very much. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like very much growth at all. It's say really at about 13, which unfortunately, because it's definitely, it's a pied female, but almost every other, I think this might be the only female that I ultrasounded today that didn't have some growth in it, so that's pretty good. And guess what? I think I'm gonna actually bring the ultrasound over here in a little bit and see if we can actually ultrasound Cupcake, the big boa, just to see, is she potentially gravid? That would be dope, so I'll do that in a little bit. All right, so we got the ultrasound over, gonna check out uh, Cupcake. We'll see how she goes. It's a little bit hard, but she's a big snake, right? So I'm just gonna slowly get her out here. Come on, girl, it's okay. Come on, big girl. She definitely looks fat, but I'm not sure if she's rabbit or not, but that would be pretty amazing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set her on the ground right here, real gently. What a big snake, I tell you what, that's a monster boa. I'm just gonna go ahead and move this up. Right in here is where I should be able to scan and see if there's anything going on right now. And you know, I don't see, you know, it's funny. I see masses right now. I don't know, they, I think that, yep, they are. There is actually big masses right here. I can't tell if there's a snake in them, but there absolutely is masses all the way down. So she's definitely carrying, whether they're live babies or slugs, I don't know yet, but there's absolutely zero doubt in my mind when you go down her oviduct that you see big masses. Gosh, I wish I could see little snakes. It'd make me feel so much better. So yes, she is 100%. She's grabbing for sure. Now we're going to have to wait to see if she has live babies. Holy cow, that is awesome. I mean, it's a little bit disconcerting the fact that I can't see like kind of spines and stuff like that oftentimes, but she's also a very big snake and this only penetrates so far, right? So there's different megahertz, but uh, absolutely no doubt that there's masses in there. So that is really cool. So now we just have to wait and see. There's also a chance, although it'd be off season, she could be gearing up for an ovulation. So I might go ahead and throw that male boa back in with her just for the heck of it. Again, off season, because they typically would be having babies in the next say month or so. Um, so doubtful that she has an ovulate, but then again, you never know. So uh, there you go. We'll see what happens with Cupcake in the coming months. I know I always say it, but I appreciate you guys so much for always supporting me. It means the world to me, allowing me to live my dream. And I'm so lucky to be able to do the things I love and be surrounded by these animals. And I truly hope that you follow your path in these times it's the time to kind of make the changes and to go after things and spend some time now doing things that maybe you didn't have time to and again we will get through this I really do appreciate you guys if you want you can check out a playlist of a bunch of feeding reptiles because I know you guys really like that you can also spend some time if you want listening to our podcast right up here you can subscribe to it. it's called checking in uh, at least once a week twice a week sometimes even three times a week you can subscribe to the vlog channel over here turn the post notifications on again have the best day you possibly can. You guys mean the world to me. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.